Thank you, Speaker. And my question is to the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Earlier this week, I asked the minister to address the crisis in corrections and provide mental health supports for those who need it. And the minister replied, quote, those supports are in place in all of our institutions, end quote. Well, Speaker, those supports don't exist in every institution. Central East Correctional Centre in Lindsay has an infirmary that has been converted to dorms for female inmates. And they used to have an unofficial health unit, but it got closed. How many infirmaries have never been opened, and how many mental health programs have been cut by this ministry? Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to take the question. Again, I want to thank all of the folks that work in our correctional division for the work that they do. What I can say with respect to mental health nurses, for example, Speaker, is we've hired 36 additional mental health nurses in our correctional uh, division. That's up from 13 to 49 now since 2013 alone. We've also invested $25 million this year alone in programs to support inmates, uh, including programs like domestic violence, guns and gangs, relapse prevention, and Indigenous programming as well. Speaker, we continue to make these investments in our correctional system because we know it's the right thing to do. We've also committed to a full review because we know that more needs to be done, more investments need to be made to improve our infrastructure, to continuing to build the staff and capacity yes, that's needed to ensure we have a correctional system that we all want to see, Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. There is a crisis in corrections, and this government talks and talks and talks, but after years of neglect, this ministry needs action, not announcements. You avoided a strike by promising yet unseen legislation, are installing body scanners without policies or staffing, and you've made changes to disciplinary segregation, but nothing for the majority indefinitely held without mental health supports. What this government has allowed to happen to Adam Cape, the Ontario Human Rights Commissioner, has now called torture. These aren't decisions made by correctional staff or even the institution superintendent. It is the responsibility of the minister and the premier. Is neglect and torture acceptable to the minister and this premier? Minister? Speaker, what a ridiculous question. Of course it's not. And, Speaker, we are taking action on this issue. It is a very, very important issue. Uh, granted, the use of segregation is over-relied on in the correctional division. And the challenge that we have is physical infrastructure and space, and obviously the conditions that an individual is in while in segregation, which we continue to work to improve. But let rem me remind the member opposite that the Human Rights Commissioner, in fact, today said and I quote, I accept this was not an individual who could have remained in the general population. So she also goes on to refer to systemic issues in the correctional system. The point being, Speaker, yes, segregation is over relied on, and we need to find better ways in our system to address these challenges. We're committed to doing that. That's why we've called for a full, Answer. intensive review of the entire correctional system in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you.